We will focus most of our work in this segment on tapestry mapping, but I wanted to continue what I was doing in the last video to show you boundaries and labels, a little bit of a deeper dive on the right side there where you can look at the administrative and census and other boundaries, political boundaries, and you can of course add labels as well. Some of the labels might interfere with the labels you have in your base map, so it depends on what your base map is as to how effective this will be, but if I wanted to turn on the labels for counties, notice now dynamically, and this is one of the wonders of WebGIS that Business Analyst web app is a part of, you've got a dynamic, without even saying done, without even saving, you've got the dynamic response so you can quickly move to your analysis. You don't have to spend a lot of time saving and refreshing and things like that. There's a lot of uh, fun and interesting base maps, colored pencil, mid-century are a couple of my favorites, but you've got imagery, you've got open street map, topo maps, etc. in array uh, in the gallery of base maps. The point is you can label things and you can add political and statistical boundaries with different colors and fonts and so on. So I'm going to keep this pretty simple, go to train with labels, and now I see those labels that I've just added. So that helps me make an, a more informed decision. Also, last but not least, I know we haven't gone into every single tool here, but you can experiment on your own. I just wanted to show you that you can create a site from which you can create infographics, reports of various kinds. Let's run the dominant tapestry profile since that's our theme for this particular unit. This particular video, this is Boom Burbs, El Paso County. The predominant tapestry segment is Boom Burbs. You can read about what Boom Burbs are, the behaviors, the lifestyles, the demographics. It's just absolutely fascinating. Now, indexes like tapestry have their pros and cons. They don't encapture, encapsulate every single thing in a set of people, and they also don't discuss individuals. So you may have exceptions. Obviously, in a neighborhood, you're going to have lots of exceptions to boom burbs. These variables are fascinating and interesting and useful for businesses to target market for their products and services, but they're also very useful. Look at the amount of resources you have in these infographics, and they're all dynamic too. You can click on things as I was starting to do there to get more information. They're also useful though for teaching instructional purposes and in research, having the students think about scale of the different tapestry layers and do those tapestry layers truly encompass what the behaviors and demographics are of a neighborhood. They're uncannily and semi-creepily accurate. They're very, very useful, but also they're very telling in terms of what a population does and behaves like and exercises and eats and, and uh, purchases and, and so on. But of course, they're not perfect. They are very useful though. Notice you also have in these infographics, they're all clickable elements so you can investigate more fully. In this case, El Paso County, Colorado. Oh my goodness, this is amazing looking at the growth rates, the education level, even histograms of population. So population pyramids, which I dearly love as a geographer. Let me just have a moment. I dearly love population pyramids, and I'm sure you do as well. Exporting this to PDF or Excel, etc., you've got some choices there. So you don't have to just look at it inside Business Analyst Web App, which is what we're doing right here. So we can save that site that we've just clicked on, in this case, El Paso County, looking at the tapestry data. We don't have to stop there though. We can also make maps showing the different distributions of the predominant tapestry type. Now for more research on tapestry, you, there's plenty of documentation online, but if you really want to go back, the first book I ever read on geodemographics and neighborhood segmentation is Michael Weiss's book, W-E-I-S-S, -S, book on the the Clustering of America. That was the title of the book, 1988. That was the first real rigorous look at tapestry segmentation and target marketing. We've got the maximum geography level reached. I wanted to show you how to override that. We've got county level, so it says you can't look at census tracts or block groups. So if we change the analysis extent, we'll be able to look at a finer level of detail, hence more uh, a larger scale of detail. Right now we're looking at counties. So again, pros and cons of the tapestry data. This is the predominant tapestry segmentation for different counties. If I scroll to the east, I'm going to have not boom burbs at all. I'm going to have 
Heartland Communities, which makes more sense if you start reading the description about Heartland Communities. I've got these farming and ranching communities on the eastern plains of Colorado and the western part of Kansas. So let's take a look at, we could make an infographic of the Heartland Communities and compare that to Boom Burbs. Interesting, really interesting to look at the differences and similarities between the median age, the employment, the education level, again, consumer preferences, and so on. What do Heartland Communities people care about in mass? Uh, what do they buy? What do they behave like? What kind of cars do they drive, etc.? So, and you, I, I love the fact that you can get a instantaneous snapshot of the USA. Now, this tapestry data is USA. There's, there's some demographic and behavioral data for other countries, but it's the richest for the USA. But you can get a distribution on that graphic of where these heartland communities occur. And as you saw there, Midwest, Great Plains, etc. Uh, we're not going to spend time in this video, but realize that there's a boatload, a wealth of infographics at your fingertips. So that is a little bit of a deeper dive there, but let's go ahead and go back to Colorado Springs and I can choose it from the pick list here at the, the right hand side, that search bar. Notice that we can change what we're analyzing. Notice the level of details. Now we're going to look at counties and maybe zip codes and census tracts in a bit. So it says, hey, you've got to change the analysis extent to, uh, to map additional levels of detail. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to go here, here and say, the, yeah, we'll take a look at what we've got in terms of, of choices with the analysis extent. We're going to go to current map extent, and then we're going to have block groups, census tracts, zip codes at our fingertips. So notice Colorado Springs. I think this is just a fascinating tool because not all El Paso County is boom burbs. Some of you know El Paso County. Some of you know Colorado Springs. Northern part of Colorado Springs, look, it's college towns, dorms to diplomas. That's near Colorado College one of my favorite campuses. If you go over to Manitou Springs, that's sort of a, a, a funky uh, old mining town turned into sort of a tourist mecca. So you've got some interesting, you know, people that look like they just came down from the gold prospecting uh, mines up in the up, in Cripple, up on Cripple Creek, you know what I mean? 20-somethings. You've got a, a various, uh, really interesting mix of people in Manitou Springs. So that's what's reflected here. It's not all boom burps is the point. As we zoom in to a finer level of detail, and of course we can get reports for any of these, in this case, neighborhoods or block groups. Yes, in various formats, PDF, you can download it to Excel, you can run reports, you can run infographics. So if we just run one of the reports, I just want you to see the level of detail in here. We could spend the whole of the video looking at this report. Let's go ahead and take a look at that report. It becomes part of your table of contents, so it's very easy to manage content. Look at the, the granularity, fruits and vegetable purchases for this particular neighborhood. Oh my goodness gracious. Retail goods and expenditures, lawn and garden, uh, prescription drugs, uh, you name it. Old and newcomers there. Top tapestry segment in that particular block group. Interesting. Fascinating to be able to do this and have this data at your fingertips and these tools online, in the cloud, nothing to install, running on the web. That to me is one of the most mind-boggling parts of this, is that you're running this on the web. Let me just have a moment. That to me is a major paradigm shift, time, major paradigm shift, and a major leap forward. As we pan down toward Pueblo, we're going to get larger block groups because the population density is less. So we're going to have that sensitivity to the modifiable aerial unit problem. We want to be sensitive to the the size of the area that we're looking at. So if we go to a rural area, the the statistical and and Political areas are all going to be larger, especially the statistical areas, block groups, census tracts, and even zip codes. So it'd be sensitive to that, but we're going to see some different tapestry segments. And notice that we just panned over by Fort Carson, which is a major army base at Colorado Springs. We're seeing some military tapestry segments there. So tapestry segmentation mapping, a little bit of report.